Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to take another look at the Camera Raw interface, specifically to fix issues with exposure. Now, earlier in our series, we took a nice look at an overblown photo, and we did fix it using Camera Raw. So if you want to jump back to our blog over at rastervector.com, you could check out that old episode to learn a little bit more. Today, we're going to do a subtle adjustment where the exposure is just not quite right. So let's jump in. I've opened up a picture here with RAW, and we're going to work with this one. You can go ahead and download this picture if you actually have the book, Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS4. There's a link on the CD-ROM that you can use to pull down the pictures on the podcast. Otherwise, just grab one of your own RAW files. What we're going to do here is tweak the exposure in the scene. So let's do a quick reset. We'll option click here and reset the image. And notice that we have control. This is where the picture was originally, a bit overexposed to say the least. But we can start to pull that exposure down and notice how we're restoring detail back into the image. That's looking pretty good there for exposure. And I can also pull down recovery to go after the highlights. So if we want to open exposure back up a bit, you'll see how the recovery slider is going after those brightest areas and pulling those down. That's looking pretty good. Let's toss a little bit of fill light in to lift up the shadowy areas for the butterfly, but then pop the blacks so they're nice and crisp. That's looking really good. I'll put a little bit of vibrance back in so that picture's nice and brisk. And that's looking great. Clarity is also an adjustment you can make, and that really does a little bit of selective detail. And notice, without, we'll let that redraw, and with, and you see it really does a nice job there of tightening up the details in the image. Now, let's go on over to the next tab to further refine exposure. And we're going to go after the tone curve here. Now, we can play with things like contrast, putting in a strong contrast if we want. And notice how as we pull this value here, the whites are being pulled back down. If you go too far, you're going to lose detail. So you got to find the right balance. And I want to pull the blacks in just a little bit so those get nice and crisp. Here's our next segment, which is the actual detail panel. And this allows you to sharpen the image. Now to make an accurate decision, you should be viewing this at 100%. So take a look at the object itself and play with the amount of sharpening. That's looking pretty good there for the details of the wings and the petals. And I could play with the amount here until I'm happy with it. If there's a lot of noise, you can use noise reduction to pull it down in the brighter channels. But this image really doesn't suffer from too much noise in the color or luminance areas. Our next area is if you wanted to do a grayscale conversion or tweak saturation. I'm happy with how things are. Split toning is also useful if you want to go after shadows and highlights independently, but we can leave that alone. Lastly, we have our lens correction here that we're going to use. Let's zoom back out, Command minus, or Command zero to show the whole image. And I want to put a little bit of a vignette in here to darken the edges. Notice here we can go ahead and tweak the amount either brightening the edges or pulling them back down a bit. And that draws the eye towards the center. That's looking pretty good. Our last two panels allow us to tweak the camera settings or store this as a preset so we can use it again. If I want, I can click and call this Butterfly Garden. And then I can actually use those settings on subsequent images for tweaking. When ready, I can click the Open Image button to go ahead and develop this using those settings. If I just wanted to store those settings for future use, I'd click Done. Now the cool thing here about this raw developing process is that your original camera file remains untouched. So you can always go back to it at any point in time and tweak it. The adjustments are all stored in that sidecar file as XMP type data, and that really just saves the settings of what you want done to the image. Let's go ahead and click Open Image, and we'll send this into Photoshop. And you'll see that all those settings were pulled in. And the cool thing here is that we were able to use the raw dialog box to rescue overexposed areas and really get a nice process. Remember, Camera Raw is incredibly flexible, but it's really recommended that you use it with raw files. So 
upgrade your camera or check your menu settings and make sure that you can start shooting raw. It has lots of benefits that's really going to open up the world of professional photography to you. My name is Rich Harrington. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. You can find lots of resources over at our blog, rastervector.com. And if you enjoy the show, please jump on over to iTunes or Adobe TV and post a review. Thanks for joining us.